I'm Lisa Dimanen and welcome to eSailGP. SailGP combines the fastest on-water race boats with the best sailing athletes in the world. And we may not have any on-water action right now, but we're still here to bring you your sailing fix. Today, we have five of the best sailing athletes in the world going head-to-head -head against some top e-sailing gamers. We know how good they are on the F50, but let's see how they go at Virtual Regatta inshore. Later on in the show, we have an exclusive in-quarantine interview with Sir Ben Ainsley. I mean, it was you know, fantastic to go back and watch some of the videos. You know, sailing in Sydney Harbour is just, just a dream, really, and we had fantastic condition. Before we get started, here's everything you need to know about the game and eSail GP. eSail GP players monitor the wind strength and direction to power the EF50 through the course using the arrows for controls to find the perfect line. They tack and jibe to get round the marks while staying clear of the boundaries. Boats must avoid collisions and penalties as they navigate the challenging upwind stretch before racing up to 50 knots downwind as they speed into the finish line. In today's show, we're pitting athletes against gamers, against each other on the virtual waters of San Francisco Bay. All eight competitors will take part in three fleet races. The winner of each gets 10 points, with the points dropping by one for each place further down the leaderboard. The two highest ranked competitors at the end of the three fleet races will face off for the final clash of the day, the winner takes all match race. Well, what a lineup we have for episode one of eSail GP Athletes v Gamers, beginning with Diego Bottin, twice a European champion. He's also an Olympic 49er sailor. Timothy Lepau, well, his granddad and dad are both Olympians and he's the youngest member of France Sail GP. Taylor Canfield, born and raised on the US Virgin Islands, is one of the world's greatest match race sailors. Matt Gottrell is a world and Olympic champion in rowing, but what a grinder he's turned out to be for Great Britain Sail GP. And Tommy Johnson, born in Australia, now representing Denmark. It's his second season of Sail GP, and he makes his debut in Athletes v Gamers. So too, Bart Lambritz of the Netherlands, a brilliant 49er sailor in his own right, fourth in the World E-Sailing Championships. Pepe D'Amato, the Italian, he's into kiteboarding, and he could cause an upset here. And the young 14-year-old, Dua Bosma, a world-class gamer hoping to get in amongst the mix in a fascinating star-studded lineup. There's been all sorts of chat in the build-up. Here comes the action from Fleet Race 1. Well, this is episode one. It's athletes against gamers. There's been a lot of talk and a lot of expectation. Now it's time for them to deliver. In the black, it's Bart Lambrix making a great start. The young Dutchman, Tommy Johnson, nearest the camera. Remember, he's an active sail GP sailor, formerly of the USA, now Denmark. Bottin, Bottin trying to close the gap there on the Frenchman Lapau. But what a rounding there by Bart Lambrix early on. That was a class start, Jody Shields. Was a class start indeed, and Timothy LaPau was in a great spot there. And you look at him on the bottom of the screen, he hit the mark, he's not happy with that. That's put him way back in the field. But one bloke is not back in the field, his young Bart, he is leading Taylor Canfield. Missed the mark, what happened there, Rob? He missed it, now he's trying to rewrite himself. Oh, he's having all sorts down this bottom end. Well, that just shows you that it may be one thing to be a world match race champion on the water, but in the e-sailing division, that doesn't count for anything. And Canfield ran into real problems there. Lambrix leads. D'Amato, the classy young Italian, he's in second place. Lapau has got a lot to do to close the gap. So too Matty Gottrell. Remember, Gottrell is in his second season of Sail GP. He's a world and Olympic champion in the rowing eight. 
And Botty and Jody has taken a completely different tack down this leg. I wonder what his tactics are here because everybody else has gone left. Well, Lambrick still leads at the moment. The power trying to close the gap. Remember, these guys are operating into the wind, 26, 27 knots. When they're downwind, they'll be in excess of 40 knots. Gottrell now still in sixth place, but it's Lambrick's lead. Remember, he's a world-class sailor in his own right. Ranked 17th in the 49er standings at the moment, and it's D'Amato, the Italian in second, and the young Bosma in third. They're coming downwind now, so pretty much on the downwind leg, it's almost a drag race. They don't do as many tacks as what you would see, or many manoeuvres as what you would see on the upwind. So most of the boats going over to the right and heading back down to this bottom gate. And young Bart still doing a cracking job leading this fleet. Yes, Lambrick's out front with D'Amato sailing very smoothly in second place. Bosma third, but it looks as though Bottin is putting him under real pressure. And maybe this battle for third is the real drama in this race as we look at Lapau trying to just stay ahead of Gottrell because surely, Jody, you can't see Lambricks being overtaken at this stage, can you? Not at this stage. And the interesting race here between uh, Lapau and Gottrell, they're two grinders from opposing teams in the Sale GP, so they would love nothing more than to beat each other and just full bragging rights. This is Bottin trying to find something to close the gap. What's he got to do here, Jody, to get up from fourth to third? He's not far away beat another boat I guess but he's just got to get clean he's just tacked now and you see there the young fella in uh, in Douai has got another penalty so this could be the, the door that opens for him they've split tacks at the top mark so Diego is gone over to the right hand side and young Douai is following him as well so this is the drag race in towards the last mark and then they go around this mark and fly into the finish. So he's in good shape here, Diego. Well, what a big, great shape. What a big build-up. Yeah, what a big build-up we've got here. Lambricks is home and hosed. He's taken the first of the fleet race victories here in E-Sail San Francisco. And look at this. Bottin gets the yeah. acceleration. D'Amato was second. And Bottin, over the last 150 metres, just had enough to deny the young Dutchman the last place on the podium. Well done, Bart. Great way to kick things off. How does it feel to go head to head against some of the Sail GP athletes? Um, it's great, great fun racing all these real sailors. I think it's fun to to race someone, for example, like uh, Diego Botin, who I uh, normally race in a 49er in real life. Well, Jody, we would have perhaps expected the e sail experts to dominate. What have the Powell, Gottrell, Canfield, and Johnson got to do to close that gap? They just got to sail a little bit more cleaner. They got plenty of penalties out of that race, and that uh, in this e sail world, a penalty costs you a massive computer, just shuts you down, and the lead boats just take off. So they need to sail a little bit cleaner. Lambrex, Tomato, Bottin are your three podium places. Gottrell, Canfield, and Johnson will have to do better in race two. My isolation lobby is a balcony garden with my first flower. Hibiscus, yes, and the second one will be arriving. I'm reading uh, in isolation uh, Chupi. Yes, this is for the child. While in isolation, we've all been cooking up a storm. But if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would that be? That's the question we put to our Sail TV athletes when we caught up with them in Sydney. Careful, don't watch this one on the next stomach. It'd be really boring having just one piece of food. Because you need to have a piece of food that is going to be able to sustain you to live. Everything that you want to eat will probably kill you. <gasps> one kind of food for the rest of my life. Italian. Noki. I'd probably say tacos. Japanese food. Mango. Oh, I just had one 10 minutes ago, it was pretty tasty. Yeah, I just remember it. <laughs> Yeah. Beef Wellington. Oh, just, yeah, go nuts with chocolate. Very proper British meal. Milk chocolate, Cadbury Australian chocolate, so good. Caramel, hazelnut. Damn. Nah, I reckon I get sick of any, I don't think I can have one piece of food. Oatmeal. <laughs> with some nice fruits and nuts and stuff. It's powerful and healthy. Any Italian food, I mean, I love it. <laughs> I like a lot of uh, the unhealthy stuff. Yeah, pasta, pizza. I mean, the hard thing is with my job on the boat, you know, it's not a very physical role, which means I can't eat those kind of foods. So it's, uh, it's a bit painful. 
chocolate. Why are you guys looking at me like that? I, mean, it's hot. I just get all these looks and they're laughing over here. I got the peanut gallery on this side. Oh, I can't go past crust pizza. It's not good for you, but it's, uh, it's amazing. My mom would hit me over the head for saying that. She'd want an answer like broccoli or green beans or something. Vegetables. Love vegetables. Two avocados and steak. For sure it's um, uh, poisson cru. Fish with uh, uh, coconut milk. It's really, really nice. You need to try. Well, how will the rest of this field try and take down Bart Lambrich? Lambrich, remember, is in the black coming up towards the start line and it looks as though the Dutchman's got away well here. Taylor Canfield just drifting back towards the rear of the field because he got a penalty. Watch for Lambricks here. Can he round this mark in first place? D'Amato's going well though on his inside the Italian and what a rounding that is by D'Amato and Lambricks has got a little bit of thinking to do here, Jody. He does indeed. And look at the uh, Sail GP athlete, Timothy the Power, and he's happy with himself. He's high-fiving into the camera. He's in a good spot there in third, so he'd be stoked being racing up to the top end of this fleet. And as he goes around that left-hand mark, he's in equal first position and heading over to the right-hand side. Well, Bottin has got a penalty, so he's drifted back. But what a start there by Timothy Lepau. Look at the confidence, pulling at the T-shirt. Oh, wow, they say pride comes before a fall. I think he's celebrating a bit too early here, Jody. And we've got D'Amato and Lambricks on the other side of the racetrack. So do you think they're trying to put into play tactics from the first race? Yeah, they're coming on cross on star, but young Bart's got him, but Timothy Lepau, oh, and he's blown it. He's had to tack right in front of young Bart, and you see him there on the bottom of the screen. He knows he's made a big mistake. He's gone from first to third. Now that's uh, TJ, Tommy Johnson, who now represents Denmark, although born and raised in Australia, a man of huge sail GP experience, a great athlete in his own right. Canfield still in fifth. And the question here, Jody, can Le Pau manage to close the gap and make amends for that early error? Well, I reckon if he stops showboating, he might be able to actually sail these things all right, because he's shown a little bit of promise. And it's a great rounding down there for Timothy Le Pau, and he's on the chase. We've got a big split in the fleet. We've got a couple of boats coming to the left. And this all goes back to the tactics of the upwind. The sailors or the athletes are looking for dark parts of the water and that indicates more wind. So the more wind you go, like any other sailing, the faster you go. D'Amato just with the edge perhaps, but I wonder whether Lambrix has moved into the lead here. What a leg. And I think Bart's going to make it. Pepe is going to have to tack, and he has had the tack. Bart's going around the left-hand mark. That's the favourite mark, because you can go down, win now, and all they got to do is get towards the bottom of that course as quick as they can. And there's the power into third, heading downhill. And remember, this is the last leg, Rob, so this is the race to see who can take the podium. So it's gamers in first and second with an athlete, Timothy Lepau, in third. And we had one sail gp sailor on the podium in race one but it's lambrix here it looks as though he is destined to go two out of two here in san francisco another fantastic end to a great race d'amato once again in second place and timothy lapau will come home for third it looks like it's the young dutchman bosma who's in fourth what a great race good race here between maddie gottrell and tommy johnson and maddie gottrell just steals it from tommy gottrell at the finish Hey Matt, so you were an Olympic rower, then you moved to a sailor as a grinder, and now you're taking a hand as a gamer in East Sail GP. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's just has times are changing, you can kind of get involved in anything these days, and especially with what's going on in the world at the moment. I think e-gaming's got its uh, find and place at the top of most people's agendas, so it's been, uh, yeah, it's been good fun. It gets you thinking a little bit about sailing if you can't get out of the water. You guys just can't help yourself except compete against each other. I think, uh, yeah, anytime you get involved in something like this or a bit of fun, you kind of starts off fun and then it gets a bit more serious, but no, I wish I spent a bit more time uh, practicing for that. Too many, a few too many mistakes cost me, I think. Two out of two for Lambrix and two runner-up spots for Pepe D'Amato. Diego Botan is in third place overall, but he finished fifth in that race. It was Timothy Lepau who came through for the third podium spot in race two. Nothing to separate him, the Spaniard or Bosma, the young Dutch gamer in fifth. We are delighted to be joined on eSail GP today by great British healthman Ben Aisley. Ben, it's a pleasure to have you on. How is quarantine treating you? Well, it's a 
you know, strange times for everybody. And, you know, for my family and I, we live on the Isle of Wight. So we're in a sense, we're geographically quarantined from the, from the mainland a little bit. So it's definitely been an interesting social experiment. I give it that, but in a more serious note, of course, it's been a huge challenge for, for the whole world and particularly those healthcare workers, you know, on the front line of this crisis. Obviously we can't get out on the water and go sailing. Have you still managed to get your sailing fit somehow? Yeah, it's, it's tough not being out there, but it's been fascinating to see all these sort of online games that, that are going on. And I know we've got the CLGP regatta that started the other day and I'm supposed to be take it, taking part in a, in a few days time, I think, or a few weeks time and trying to desperately to get some practice in because I uh, I have to admit, it's not something I've really done before. Matt raced, uh, Matt Gottschall, Shrek, our grinder, one of our grinders, uh, was the first to go up and race and I think he was last or, or second to last. So, you know, he's really let the side down badly and, and we're gonna do a lot more practice, but you know, things like that are, are great fun, great distraction and good to people to see people coming together online. Well, I, th I think what's sort of rare about this sort of pause is that you have a lot of time to reflect and with just one SailGP event under your belt. Have you had time to, to look back at that event and really analyze it? Well, I mean, it was, you know, fantastic to go back through it and, and watch some of the videos, you know, sailing in Sydney Harbour is just, just a dream really. And we had fantastic conditions. You've always got to think about ways you can improve be better and, and it, like you say these are the times to try and reflect on on those moments when this coronavirus eases up uh, and get racing again how can we be better do you have a message to wrap up to everyone out there that's ha having a tough time and how they can stay strong over the next couple of weeks well i'll just say that you know these are you know these are tough times you know we're very fortunate those that go out in the water those that sail to experience nature at its best and you know you'll get that moment again so yeah hang in there and uh, wait for the good good times to come well what an intriguing backdrop to this third fleet race bosma the young dutchman nearest the camera he's had a pair of fourth place finishes can he get himself into the mix for a place in the match race because it's Lambrix and D'Amato first and second overall after occupying those spots in the opening two races and Jody Shields what a start to this race by the 14 year old gamer he's had a blinder he was going straight really fast at that first mark and then there was penalties galore some of the athletes copped some big penalties and you see Tommy Johnson there with his head down at the bottom of the screen he copped one as well but the race is on down to the bottom here how close is that? All going to that right-hand mark. Le Pau on the podium in race two. Bottin, the Spaniard, on the podium in race one. The two athletes putting the gamers under pressure. And speaking of pressure, for the first time, we're going to get to see what Bart Lambrix is made of because he's had the first two fleet races all to himself. But courtesy of Bosma's brilliant start, he's got it all to do, the Dutchman, as we watch Bottin trying to close the gap on the runaway leader, the 14-year-old, who's gone on to the other side of the racetrack. Interesting tactics, Jody. Yeah, he'd done that in the, one of the earlier races, and I like it over here. You're getting away from the big fleet. You're staying nice and clean, which is what this e-sailing is all about. Well, Bottin trying to close the gap, but it's the young Dutchman leading from the Spaniard, D'Amato. Well, D'Amato has to watch here because he's got the two athletes quite close behind him in the overall standing so he's not guaranteed a place in the match race the italian and it was a big tight squeeze up that top mark but tight decided to jibe off early and get into the middle of the course where there looks like a little bit more breeze but it's still the game is giving the athletes a little bit of a lesson on how to sail their 50s here rob they are i mean i guess we we should have expected it is their domain it is their domain the gamers but botting is sailing brilliantly here He's a double European champion. He's been to the Olympic Games in Rio. And if he can put Bosma and the rest under pressure, he's got half a chance of taking that second spot in the match race if we're safe in assuming that Bart Lambrix will be over the line after his two fleet victories in races one and two. Bosma is in the lead. Watch out for Bottin though, because he could get in the shakeup for a place in the match race. Lambrix is third. We need to keep an eye on D'Amato, the Italian, in fourth because I don't think he can afford to finish any further down than that if Bottin finishes on the podium, if the Italians to get a crack at Lambrix in the match race. All sorts of tactics going on here, Jody. I'm not sure what happened to the young fella's computer there, but he just had a little bit of a glitch. 
right at the worst possible time, but he got the, got out of it intact. And now he's around the top mark, just in front of Diego Botton, who's still having an absolute great race. Bosma still leads. Bottin is in second. Lambrick's third. Nearest the camera now with the black sails. And the key is where D'Amato finishes. What a victory this is going to be for the 14-year-old. It's not a clean sweep for Lambricks. He's third. Sandwiched in between them is Bottin, the brilliant 49er sailor. And just watching for D'Amato. This is Tommy Johnson in front of the camera. D'Amato has crossed the line in fourth. And I think that may well hand him the second match race spot. Hi, Taylor. So how does the E-Sail GP compare to real sailing? Oh, <laughs> You know, there's there's no substitute for doing you know 40 plus knots on the water with the apparent wind and the and the water hitting you in the face. So, um, you know, it's you definitely get some thrill doing this, and uh, you know, you definitely feel some adrenaline going through you. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think it'll ever replace the real thing. Lambrix and Damato, it'll be Netherlands against Italy in the match race. Osma finishes third overall. Bottin just behind him in fourth. He is the leading athlete with the three gamers finishing first, second, and third overall. Hi, Pepe. So can you give us any insight into how you're going to approach the race? So it's a match race, so I'll try to cover him at the beginning, but I don't want to show so to show you the, all, all what I have in my mind, so let's see the race. Well, best of luck, Pepe. Congratulations, Bart, for making the match race. How are you going to take on Pepe? I think uh, the start will yeah will be a big deal. Um, gonna try to give him a penalty and then uh, we'll see where it goes. All right, then good luck. Well, this is it, Bart Lambrix against Pepe D'Amato. D'Amato, arguably the underdog, but he's got what he wanted, Jody Shields. He has forced the penalty and that's given him a fantastic chance right at the start of this match race. He said he wanted it, and that's exactly what he did, Rob, and he's sailing away with it at this stage. So he gets around the first mark in first place, but the chase is on young Bar to be filthy of the fact that he got a penalty off the start. So he doesn't have many options now. Boat in front could pretty much just dictate where you want to go and sit all over the top of young Bart. So what will he do here? Will he split or will he follow? And he's going to follow. So he's happy. Oh, he's followed and tacked straight away. That's quite interesting, Rob. I'm surprised he never went over to that other gate if he wanted to get over this left-hand side. Would you put Lambricks as the favourite, even though he's had that really disappointing start, bearing in mind how dominant he was for the first two fleet races? Yeah, coming into this race, I had him as my pick, but uh, he's got a little bit to do here. Pepe's just covering him. So what I mean by covering him, you can sit on the top of him and give him dirty air. And you see that on your screen, that lighter part of the, the screen is showing that Bart is getting dirty air, he's trying to get away from it, but Pepe can just pretty much do what he wants up and around this top mark. Does Bart follow again? Yes, he will. Pepe sailing off to the left. I'm assuming Bart's going to have to do something, throw some sort of tactics at him soon, maybe jibe off and go to the other side. He's trying to get dirty. You can see there, Rob, on the bottom of the screen, on the bottom of Bart, the, the light colour. He's trying to get that lightish air into Pepe and slow him up. But Pepe's doing a great job so far to stay in front. He is. Just watching the speeds there, they were both around about 45 knots. And Lambrix has got it all to do here. And once again, he's taken the opposite side of the racetrack. So maybe he believes he's just faster. And it's that simple. We're about to find out, I guess, Jody. Bart's trying to get in clean air there, and he's done a good job. He seemed to have got out underneath him with a bit more speed. And I think he's used the fact that Pepe had to tack, and he's a little bit slower there, Rob. So now the drag race is on to the right-hand side. Pepe throwing one back on top of Bart. Oh, it's so close. So little to judge between them. Lambrix definitely feels as though he's been the faster for much of this leg, but look how close they are together. Oh my goodness me. Who makes the first move here, Jody? It'll be who blinks first and Bart tacked in underneath and Pepe straight on top. What Bart has to try and do is get up to this gate. I'm not sure whether he's going to get to the top mark. He's going to have to do another tack, but Pepe certainly will. Can Bart throw a tack in? Oh, he squeezed him out. Pepe had to tack. Bart's going up very slow around that mark. And he's got a penalty. He's hit the mark. Is that the moment right there, Rob, that he's lost this race? Surely 
He must think so. There's a wry smile on the face of Pepe D'Amato. He now has the advantage. On the previous leg, it looked as though Bart Lambrix, who won the first two fleet races, was really coming into his own. But a costly error after great sailing from Pepe D'Amato. Two world-class gamers slugging it out here for the title in San Francisco. And D'Amato ensures it is victory for Italy. The favourite Lambrix, second this time. Well, what a key moment. Bart Lambrix colliding with that gate rounding and Pepe D'Amato has taken the title. Two individual second place finishes, fourth in the third fleet race, but it's all about what you do in the match race. And he is a number one. D'Amato takes the win. Congratulations, Pepe. That was such an intense race. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, it was a very close race because Bart is a very, very good player. Yes, I never had uh, a match race like this, really. <laughs> and what was it like competing against the professional sail GP athletes? <laughs> I was a little nervous uh, at the beginning because when I always saw them in the picture or in the videos where they go very, very fast on the catamarans, foil catamarans. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> It was fun. So that was eSail GP. We hope you've enjoyed the first edition of our new eSports show. And it's great to see the rivalries are just as intense off the water as they are during the racing season. But I do have to say the game has definitely showed up the Sail GP athletes today and they might have to spend a little bit more time training in the eSailing world. Congratulations to our winner, Pepper D'Amato, for topping off the leaderboard. And please do join us next time for some more eSail GP action.